As you get into the fall, we're commonly using terms like, hey, we're entering cold and flu season. Well, I don't like to think of a season and associate it with a disease or an illness. It's just, it's not how my brain works. And for us to have that as common speak is kind of disheartening. So I'd like to break down some of the concepts of why this time period has that connotation of cold and flu. Well, there's, there's a few different reasons, and these are, these are just out of the book of Dr. Dave. This is just my own thoughts here. Now, as the world turns and we start to tilt on our axis and we start to lose the capacity to acquire adequate levels of vitamin D from the sun, we start to lose some of our key immune modulators. That happens every fall, okay? So understanding one's ability to maintain vitamin D, that should be one thing that's really high priority for every human being, depending on your geographic locale. Because it's different. If you lived at the equator, you got it all year round, as I've mentioned in other videos. But here where we live in the central coast of California, we only get it between late May and early August. So there's this period of time where you have access, but I work in an office, so I don't get much. So I have to take vitamin D and I have to measure my levels to make sure that I've got adequate levels to get me through the fall. And so I take it regularly. And studies, numerous studies have shown repeatedly that it's a significant player in helping the body to recognize and respond appropriately to viruses and bacteria. It's a no brainer. It's inexpensive. Everybody should use it. Now that's one factor. What other things do we start to do as we enter the fall? Well, kids go back to school, people come back from vacation, so we've experienced other microbiomes in other locales, and we start to bring them back and we share them with each other. This is not a bad thing, particularly if our bodies are prepared with like vitamin D, A, C, zinc, because that's how our immune system learns. That's how we build a robust immune system by interacting with one another. And so that happens a lot. Another thing that happens every fall, starting in October, is that people start buying hordes of candy. And then we go into Thanksgiving where we eat a lot more junk food. And then we go into Christmas and New Year's where we eat even more junk food. And usually associated with each of these events is poor sleep because we're going to parties or late events. So we tend to be nutrient deficient going into the fall. We tend to have acquired a separate microbiome that our body is starting to learn about and we're sharing it with each other. We tend to start eat, eating things that are less nutrient dense and many times really pro-inflammatory and I'll get into that in just a second. And then usually our sleep starts to become disrupted during that period of time. So those are four key things that I can see that impact the human immune system that allows people who are not managing those factors to become ill. Those are all avoidable factors. Just take personal responsibility and be aware and don't do those things. And, and in fact, do the opposite. Make sure that you're, you've got a well-defined sleep schedule and focus on it. When you go to a party or event and you know that there's not gonna be great choices for food there, either eat before you come or come prepared with your own. Educate the people around you that what they're doing is literally poisoning themselves. Make sure that you have taken the time to know your own biochemistry and manage your nutrient levels so that you go into the fall ready for it. If we do these things, people have a much higher probability of staying well. And then this whole season becomes a whole different paradigm. It's no longer cold and flu season. It's truly the holidays where we can be around our loved ones and celebrate and do the things that we really want to be doing. Sugar is kind of at the root of this. And anyway, I should rephrase that. Sugar is really at the root of the food problem that we experience during this period of time because sugar and food should be disassociated. <laughs> they're, they're not even the same thing. And yet 
our embracing of it here in the United States has been mind-boggling as to the volume of sugar that people consume. Matter of fact, if it was discovered today, it would be a drug because it's more addicting than many of the highly addictive pharmaceuticals that we're trying to get rid of. The opiates, well, sugar's right up there with it and stronger in many ways. So parents, please, Take the lead from our neighbors down south in Mexico, where when they said, you know what, what's one thing that we can do to address COVID? They said, well, we could eliminate sugar from our children's diets. Bravo, I, I double thumbs up. We should be doing that here in the United States. I'm not talking about mandating laws because people all need to have their own choice in this matter. I, some of the things that I saw in New York City where they mandated, you know, downsizing on drinks. Well, okay, well, that's one way to do it, but people are just gonna buy more drinks because they're addicted to it. So we need to make those personal choices and realize that we become obese as a nation. We become less smart or less intelligent as a nation. We become more inflamed as a people when we're consuming high volumes of sugar. That's really low hanging fruit, an easy thing to extricate from the diet. Now, you can still have naturally occurring sugars from fruit you just don't obsess on them and eat them too much. You use them around times of activity where you're actually gonna be burning those carbohydrates. It's these empty, nutrient devoid, sugar laden foods that we really just gotta get out of our pantry. Don't support the companies that make them. Stop buying them, leave them on the shelf. They'll stop making them because they won't be selling them. But as long as we support that industry, the shelves are gonna be full of them. As long as we give in to our kids and throw them in the shopping cart at the checkout line, then we're going to experience those bursts of energy and then the horrible meltdowns of the kids afterwards because they're too young to understand the chemical event that their body just lived through. Those glucose insulin surges and crashes, they're mentally disturbing. They're, they're emotional traumas that we don't have to live through. So, I kind of bridged there from health and some of the, the, basically the four things that we could be aware of during the fall to this impact that sugar has in our diet and how prevalent it is in these fall months because of the events that seem to be centered around cookies and cakes and candy bars. Find a different way to celebrate. I love it when people spend time in the kitchen talking with one another and preparing food this is good. This is nurturing to one another. We just need to leave the sugar out of it and find other things to prepare that satiate our palate. One more point on that. Sugar truly is an addiction. And one of the fastest ways that we can change our propensity towards addictions to things like sugar is to do a short-term fast or maybe a series of them. Because when you abstain from eating for a period of time, the first thing that you put into your mouth after that fast, your taste buds have become heightened and enhanced and you'll actually enjoy it more. So those are times when you can start to embrace new foods. I love doing that with people. So maybe do like a 24 hour liquid fast. And then on the back side of that, prepare a meal you might not have thought to cook previously. Make sure that it has very little sugar in it, but it has good healthy fats in it because our brain loves fat. And it's so good for it when you're providing the body opportunity to access ketones from those fats. You'll find that your satiation goes up relative to these healthier foods and you'll actually start to prefer them. Play around with that. Take the time to get away from the, the easy stuff. Go for things that have longer lasting value and find ways that you're, you can share that with your family. Have a great fall, be healthy, and really enjoy each other's company. We'll talk to you soon.